Resizing an image sounds like one of the simplest things you could do in Photoshop, but there are actually some common mistakes you should avoid. In today's digital age, you'll probably want to resize an image so it fits nicely on a computer screen. However, if you're a professional designer or photographer, it becomes a little more complicated when you need to factor in print size and resolution. In today's video, I'll cover the basics of resizing an image in Adobe Photoshop and explain when you should or should not choose the resample option instead. This is crucial technical knowledge every graphic designer should know to avoid some costly mistakes or ugly prints. So resizing versus resampling, what's the difference? Resizing and resampling are two confusing terms because we tend to use them the wrong way around. We often talk about resizing an image when what we're actually doing is resampling it. In Photoshop go to image and image size or hit the command or control key on window, alt and i shortcut. By default the resample option in Photoshop is checked, which will mean the dimensions of the image will change by adding or subtracting pixels from the width and height. This is known as resampling and it's usually what we're doing when altering the size of a digital image. If the resample option is unchecked, you're now resizing the image. Photoshop will now redistribute the existing pixels to alter the physical size or resolution of the image. This is typically reserved for graphic designers or photographers who are producing prints. Photographs from cameras are pretty huge these days. They contain millions of pixels, which make both the dimensions and the file size very large. If you want to use a photo from your camera to produce a design for screen use, like a website header, a social media banner, or any digital graphics, you'll need to scale the image right down in size. Making an image smaller is known as downsampling. The image size window in Photoshop shows the current size of the image. Change the units to pixels if they aren't set already. Pixels are the standard unit of measurement for digital screens. Enter your desired pixel dimension in either the width or height field. The constraint aspect ratios chain icon is set by default to automatically calculate the other dimension so the image isn't squashed or stretched. Photoshop provides some information at the top of the window showing the new file size compared to the original size of the image. So we know images are made up of pixels. The number of pixels along the width and height of an image determines its size. It's easy to make an image smaller because any excess pixels can be thrown away. But if you want to make an image bigger, Photoshop has to conjure up some new pixels to construct the larger size. This is called interpolation. The general rule of thumb is to never make an image bigger than its current size because it will result in degraded quality with a fuzzy or pixelated appearance. However, the technology behind Photoshop can sometimes cleverly upsample an image with some pretty decent results. I mean, if you're trying to use a tiny picture from Google Images to go on a large format banner print, it's not going to end well. But if you just need to stretch out a photo a tiny bit to make it fit, you might get away without any noticeable image degradation. By default, Photoshop will choose the most suitable interpolation method itself with the automatic option. But you can now find a control over the result by choosing one of several other options in the drop down menu. Each one is designed specifically for enlargement or reduction. Upsampling an image will never be perfect, but you can minimise the image degradation by smoothing or preserving details, depending on what works best for your specific picture. One particularly useful option is nearest neighbour or hard edges. If you ever have some pixel art that you need to make bigger, or sometimes it works well with an icon or flat logo graphic. This setting preserves the hard edges, as its name suggests. This means you don't get that fuzzy haloing effect you usually get from upsampling a graphic. Traditionally, 72 ppi is the go-to resolution for screen use, while 300 ppi is the standard for print. PPI or pixels per inch refers to the digital file, which translates to DPI or dots per inch when the image is reproduced as a print. These terms are often used interchangeably, but if you want to be pedantic, PPI is the correct term for on-screen resolution, while DPI is the correct term for the print resolution, even though 300 PPI effectively means 300 DPI when it's printed. A high quality 300 PPI stock photograph, or any image shot with a posh camera, will be perfectly suited for print use because it has a combination of large dimensions and high resolution. 
On the contrary, a 72 ppi image might look pretty big on screen because you have to pan around to make it fit within your laptop monitor screen resolution, but the maximum size it can be printed at 300 ppi will be pretty small because those 72 pixels in every inch will soon run out when you need to fill each inch with 300 pixels, resulting in a smaller print size. We already know upsampling should be avoided to prevent image degradation, but you can increase the resolution of an image as long as you disable the resample option. If you don't, the image will say it's 300 ppi, but thousands of new pixels will have been interpolated by Photoshop, resulting in awful quality. To correctly change the resolution, the image should be resized, not resampled. Uncheck the resample option, which prevents you from altering the pixel dimensions. You can then change your 72 ppi image into a 300 ppi image, but notice how the physical size in inches is reduced. Resizing only works with the existing pixels without interpolating any new ones. You'll have a crisp high quality 300 ppi image with no loss of quality, but the overall print size is smaller because 300 pixels are added to every inch rather than just 72, so you can't fill as many inches. You don't have to physically change the resolution of all your images when constructing a design, in Photoshop at least. If you create a document at your desired dimensions and resolution, whenever you paste an image into that canvas, it will be automatically scaled relative to the document resolution. So for example, if you have two A4 size documents, one at 72 ppi and the other at 300 ppi, and paste in the same image, it will be different sizes relative to the A4 page because of the difference in resolution. The image will still be 300 ppi in the 300 ppi document without converting it with the image size menu first. You can also scale images and graphics up and down directly with the transform tool without having to manually alter their image size in a separate document. In the top toolbar you'll see similar options to the image size window, including the dimensions, which can be changed to different units, and even the scaling method. Remember also not to scale your layers larger than their original size, this is effectively the same as upsampling them. That's why it's important to source your assets such as photos and textures at the highest size and resolution possible, so they'll be usable in real world projects like posters or canvas prints. Image resolution is quite easy to understand when working in Photoshop. All you have to do is make sure you set the correct resolution at the start when creating the document, then you're good to go. But what about when you're working in Illustrator or InDesign? Vector art isn't dependent on pixels, so you don't have to specify an exact resolution at the design stage. What you do have to watch out for though, is if you ever import or place a raster image like a photograph or texture into your vector software. Photoshop would convert the image to match the resolution of the document, but Illustrator or InDesign will just take the image how it comes. This means you need to use Photoshop to set the image size and resolution manually beforehand. To finish off, let's take a look at some common mistakes you definitely want to avoid when working with images in Photoshop. First, never make the resolution figure larger if you have the resample option checked. This is an easy mistake to make because it's so easy to get the terms resample and resize mixed up. You'll get an indication this is wrong if you look at the pixel sizes. If you've just gone from 4000 to over 16000 pixels in width, those extra pixels have got to come from somewhere. The correct way to change the resolution is to uncheck resample in order to resize instead. You'll still have the same number of pixels, but just the physical print size has changed. One schoolboy error every designer has to experience at some point in their career is accidentally creating a document with a resolution in pixels per centimetre rather than pixels per inch. Chances are you'll only notice when you get frustrated that the expensive stock photographs you're using seem to be really small, or when your computer's processor starts bogging down from effectively working on a 762 ppi resolution document. Remember that the rule of not scaling up an image also applies to an image that started large but has since been scaled down. You can't then scale it back up. This is an easy mistake to make when you're shifting and scaling layers while visually building a design. If you've scaled an image or graphic down too far, don't scale it back up. Instead hit the undo button to revert back to its larger size or re-import the original asset. The only exception to this is making use of smart objects. 
Converting a layer to a smart object will preserve all its pixel data, so it isn't all thrown away when you scale it down. You can safely scale a smart object back up, but you'll need to be careful not to go larger than its original size, otherwise it'll start to become upsampled. If you enjoyed this tutorial or learnt any new tips and tricks, a thumbs up on the video would be really appreciated. Stick around for more of my content by subscribing to the channel and be sure to join my mailing list at Spoon Graphics to download all my free design resources. As always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.